calling all podcasters, musicians, vloggers, and reporters, and everyone else who wants crystal clear recording that's super portable. The Shure Motive family of microphones makes studio quality audio that's as simple as plug and play. Many of the world's top podcasters rely on Shure, and with a Motive line of iOS and USB microphones, portability is now your friend. Imagine being able to get great audio quickly and easily from your phone, tablet, or computer. Simply visit Shure.com slash Motive to start getting great audio for your content now. That's S-H-U-R-E dot com forward slash M-O-T-I-V. Blog Talk Radio. Happy New Year, folks. Uh, this is our first podcast for 2019. I'm feeling good. I hope you're feeling good and uh, being thankful that we are here for another year. Some of you might be like, well, you know, it's no big deal. Well, you know, it's a big deal. There's a lot of people who like to be in, you know, our shoes or uh, on this mic or, or sharing moments with us. Uh, but uh, uh, all the best to all of you. And of course, I'm Danny Tisdale, and you're on the Danny Tisdale Show as we speak to leaders, legends, and trailblazers blazers in the world of Harlem. Uh, and, you know, we want you to stay connected to us. Uh, and to do that, check us out at twitter.com backslash HWMag. And, of course, on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Harlem World Magazine and HarlemWorldMagazine.com. And, uh, you know, just about any social media platform there is, put in Harlem World Magazine and you'll probably find us so that you can like us, love us, and, of course, share what we do. And I'm going to get right into it. And, you know, I made the mistake of speaking to Chris before we got started. And I didn't ask him the pronunciation of his last name. And I, yeah, that's, that's Chris laughing in the background there because hopefully he doesn't do that after I pronounce his last name without asking him. But uh, Chris is a Harlem It wouldn't resident. be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to cross my fingers here. And you know what? I'm going to cross my legs Go too and it. hope I get it right. <laughs> uh, Chris Palateri. Very good, very good. Almost perfect. Okay. Almost perfect. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to work on it. He's a master stone carver who took up his craft 20 years ago from Thank a stone you. carver working at the Cathedral of St. John in, of course, Harlem near Columbia. In 2012, he opened the Stone Carving Academy to teach stone carving to the public. He has, uh, he has been written about in the New York Times and other publications for his incredible craft as an artist and artisan. Uh, today, Chris is on the show to talk about his program and the upcoming deadline of January 14th for veterans from Harlem uh, to be a part of his uh, program. And uh, let us not forget that uh, Chris continues a long tradition of this work uh, in Harlem and uh, many, 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 many of the stone uh, structures and buildings that you see in Harlem, uh, wherever you may be, uh, come from the hands of uh, artisans uh, uh, like Chris, uh, uh, who uh, in some ways have laid the um, road and the journey for uh, the work that uh, Chris does. And I've always, as an artist who is happens to be a publisher, I've always you know, love that uh, hand work, and, and I get a chance to speak to someone who carries on that tradition is, uh, 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 is something I'm looking forward to. And thank you for being on the, the show, Chris, and, and Happy New Year. Thanks so much, Danny. Happy New Year to you, too, and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank thank you, Chris. Uh, I, I think it's a, oppor- you know, it's a win-win all the way around because uh, the community wins and we get the uh, share with our, our listeners, wherever they may be uh, a, a crafts person like yourself and, and your commitment to your craft and uh, uh, listeners, you know, don't just go by what I'm saying. Uh, we're going to link um, to Chris's URL to his website uh, but our main focus is getting uh, participants to be a part of uh, his uh, uh, academy. So, Chris, I'm going to yeah. get right into it. 
Uh, what, what has inspired you to create the Stone Carvers Academy program in the first place? Well, I, I have to say it was the time that I spent as an apprentice at the cathedral. Uh, at that time, hmm. I had just finished college, and I'd been immersed in academic, you know, sedentary right. sort of right. information-based pursuits for since I was seven years old. Like anybody else, the school is fo- focused on uh, right. reading, writing, uh, mathematics, and, and all this is sedentary and doesn't involve any of our uh, abilities to use tools and, and, and to make things, which is something that as human beings we've been, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, that, that's something that makes the human beings special is, is our ability right. to use tools and innovate and, and materials and create things and pass those traditions on to younger people. So right. uh, when I discovered stone carving at the cathedral in 1989, uh, it was like my whole world changed, and, and I became mm. much more optimistic. I became much more fulfilled. I, I sort of developed uh, ambition and, and the desire to uh, just – my appetite for learning just increased tenfold. Uh, mm. Whereas as a student, I was I, I was a good student, and I was diligent, but it didn't come from my uh, – uh, inner motivation. It was more something I felt right. like I want to be a good boy. I want my parents to be uh, impressed and, and pleased with me and, and, you know, get good grades and all that. But it wasn't something that was coming from inside. When I discovered stone carving, that's really the first time I, I felt like uh, a light had turned on inside me. And I, I didn't mm. just want to do this for uh, good grades or, or to follow the crowd and, 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 do what everyone else was doing. It, it was something. It, it was the first time I really felt like here's something I, I'm excited about doing and, and find fulfilling. And I just don't never wanted to stop. It's, and at that time, there was so much work left to be done on the cathedral that mm. I thought I would be able to do it for the rest of my life. This one job, this one project, or and even not finish it in my lifetime because stone carving it, it, by traditional methods is pretty slow, and there's so much work right. still to be done at the cathedral. But unfortunately, they ran out of money. They they weren't able to uh, keep the program going. So I had to go in search of other ways of, of continuing as a stone carver, which is a challenge because the cathedral program was completely unique. I've never found anything quite like it. And that is the motivation for my uh, starting the academy, uh, Stone Carver's Academy, wow. is to share this thing with other people. It's, uh, it's not... Um, an artistic endeavor, which is like a star, you know, uh, genius uh, solo thing. <laughs> it's it's, right. it's a collaborative thing. It's it's lots of people working together and to to do something uh, that nobody could do on their own. To build a, a stone mm-hmm. building, especially something as majestic and huge as the cathedral, is something that mm-hmm. requires not only a large group at any given time, but a large group sustained over over decades. And that's, wow. that's very uh, uh, something I, I really want to help to uh, to bring about again, whether it's at the cathedral or somewhere else. But at least in in, in my small way, to share it with with people and hope hope that they will have the same kind of uh, experience and, and uh, transformation in their life that I had. The, that's really had my goal right, right now. That's right. my mission. But, yeah. So I, yeah. Well, uh, you know, Chris, before we go started, I, I you said something that. Uh, perk my ears and I, I just want to uh, make sure that I get it right which is uh, um, has those has, has all the carving on the cathedral uh, been completed or it still needs to be completed no no not by far they they, they had it's 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 had a long history. The cathedral it started in uh, 1890 or, or right. a few years more or less somewhere uh, around and, there. And, right. and uh, yeah, and at that time the stone industry was juiced up, and there were many many people that knew how to do it. There were immigrants coming from Europe who mm-hmm. were right. already right. expert at it. They didn't need to be trained. Uh, they they built incredibly rapidly for uh, you know compared to w- what 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 the pace was like when I was an apprentice there because well they stopped they basically stopped in in 1941 when world war ii started for for the united states and Uh, um, they didn't do any construction from 1941 until 1979 when my friend and a gentleman who's uh one of the 
board member, board of directors of, of Pelletier Stone Carving, Dean Morton, he decided it was time to resume construction on the cathedral. But when he looked around and he advertised and tried to find people who knew what they were doing, who could jump right in and, and be productive, he realized that huh. that whole industry had totally withered and there were no more wow. uh, skilled artisans left. Uh, well, I mean, there wow. were some, but they were in their 70s and 80s. And right, right. He, 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 he needed to um, send to uh, England and France for experts who came mm. here and they uh, they trained local you know people from the neighborhood. Uh, right. I didn't get involved until 1989 when it was already 10 years in. But um, it's, it's something I'll never forget. And I, I know Amazing. anybody else who, who was working there will never forget. It was probably the highlight of a lot of people's lives having been involved in that um, that, that uh, effort. Yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, amazing. And it's even more amazing that um, a, a building that has been with us for so long in Harlem and New York City in America and the, and the work is still not completed. Uh, uh, but not surprising, especially after what you mentioned, and, and from what I understand, uh, you, you carry on a larger tradition, and I don't think I'm incorrect, but I, I understand a lot of those uh, stone carvers were uh, Italian immigrants that came over uh, to complete, or should I not complete, but to, to work on the cathedral. Uh, is that correct, or do I have my history incorrect? Well, you mean in, in the original effort, like pre nineteen forty one? Yes, and there, you're right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not one hundred percent sure on on the, you know, ethnicities of the various craftsmen, but Europe was, you know, a place where stone carving tradition is still today much more alive than it is uh, in in the Here new in world. America. So yeah. yeah, there were people who who knew how to do it in in France, Italy, uh, Spain, Portugal. England, uh, all over the, all over the, all over, all over Europe, where it's a, a tradition that had been going on, well, back to the medieval times, right, back right, to the right, Roman right. times, back to uh, right. as far back as you can think. I mean, if you think about, you know, if you ever go on vacation and you go to Rome or or right. anywhere in Europe, wh- what are the first thing you do? You're going to go to Notre Stone Dame. You're going to go to the Colosseum. All over you're going to look place. at yeah. You're going to look right. at stone buildings from a thousand right. years ago, and and that's basically the legacy. That's the tradition, and that's something which uh, is not to be taken lightly. We don't want to lose that. We don't want to say, okay, you know, we've got machines now, we've got uh, computers and right. uh, 3D printers. We can just we don't need that anymore. Well, in yeah, a sense, we don't need we don't need, we don't need it, these crafts persons, right? Right, as human yeah, beings, we that, need it. It's it's not something we want to kiss goodbye. It's very sad to to think about. Yeah, and I, I think you're you're right on point with that, Chris, and uh, you know, which is one reason why I wanted to, one of many reasons to have uh, this conversation. And uh, I had a feeling this was going to happen, Chris. We're a couple of minutes from the midway point, and uh, and we're about we're literally two minutes away from uh, the midpoint break. And and before we get there, I wanted to ask you, uh, boy. Uh, you know, uh, what does it take for someone to get involved uh, in this uh, January 14th, Monday, which is next Monday, folks, to get yeah. involved in the program? And especially, I know you're focused on veterans. Yeah, well, there, there are st- still spaces. And, I mean, uh, the main requirement is, is that people be a, a veteran. Uh, but it's also important to, for me to find people from the West Harlem neighborhood because one of the largest right. donors to my uh, program is the West Harlem Development Corporation and one of their uh, you know tenets is is to use their funds to support uh, growth People and culture in that neighborhood yeah so in that neighborhood uh, right West Harlem yeah right. that's the I'm, I'm on the search I'm, I'm searching for the people who will be interested in doing this who, who will benefit from it and anybody who's interested in doing it or knows anybody who's interested in doing it please call me uh, my number or, or text me. My number is six four six two two nine six four one eight. All you have to do is text me. Say I'm interested, and I'll, I'll respond, and, and we can have a conversation and get together. And uh, Chris, I'm really, Chris, I'm can really you give searching. that number yeah. one more time because sure. somebody, you know, slowly went to get their pen, and the pen's not yeah, writing, yeah, no. and they need to I write that down again. I want to squeeze it in again. about. 
10 more times before the end of the show. It's 646 229 6418. Fantastic. And uh, for those of you uh, who are out there, I'm going to give you a chance to write that information down and do a station ID all at the same time. Yes. Great. I can do some juggling. Uh, you listen to the Danny Tisdale Show. This is Danny Tisdale, and it's on Harlem World Radio. And just that quickly, we are right back in to talk about the Stone Carvers uh, Academy program. We have uh, Chris Pelletieri. <laughs> Did I get any closer, Chris? You got to know. Pelletieri. That's the only uh, slight. Uh, Pelletieri. Ah, the Pelletieri. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah. you, thank you. There you go. And, yeah. uh, and, and we're talking about this great, 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 great program. Uh, the deadline is Monday, January 14th. That's next week. All you got to do is text Chris. And, Chris, give that number again. Sure. And I want to mention that's the, that's the anticipated beginning date. There's still gotcha. a possibility that we won't find uh, the people that we need and we'll have to extend that another week. But I'm really on the search now, and I'm hoping that we'll have a lot of uh, We're going to make it happen, so, Chris. Yeah. The number is 646-229-6418. We're looking for West Harlem Fabulous. veterans. And, Chris, uh, where, is, uh, where does it take – I'm going to ask a stupid question because you already said that uh, you're looking for West Harlem uh, uh, applicants, and I take it that the program takes place in West Harlem – Actually, no. It, it was intended. Oh. It, it was in, that, that was the original plan. Uh, I was invited. Well, okay. I'll continue my own personal story. I, I, after being okay. trained at the cathedral, they closed the they closed down their stone program because of uh, lack hmm. of funds. Fun. And I uh, I was searching for commissions, you know, to do the things that I could do as a solo uh, stone carver. Right. Right. And I was pretty successful doing it. And, and after a while. I uh, they they allowed me to come back to the cathedral and use the space that I'd previously been and and many other people had been using for the uh, construction of the cathedral, the work the workshed, as my own right. personal uh, studio. I was an artist in residence for almost 20 years. Um, <laughs> but uh, as some great. some of you know, uh, they built an apartment building on the site where that shed uh, used to be uh, oh. at 113th in oh. Amsterdam. And that was wow. uh, that, that was necessary for the cathedral because their uh, financial – they really need a rescue. They needed some infusion of, of uh, income. That's so uh, I, I, don't, I don't blame them for that. But I had to leave. And um, so uh, about November of last year, the de- dean, uh, dean Daniel, who's uh, relatively new at the cathedral, he invited me to come back and to set up a new stone carving space and run programs too. And I was Fantastic. just deliriously happy because uh, I'd been working out of a space in Brooklyn, which was small and it was inconvenient. It was expensive and uh, it wasn't inspiring because uh, compared to working on the grounds of the cathedral. So uh, that was great. And I started to start oh, funding with, right. the, uh, with the expectation that I would be running the program. And I was also planning to start it in October of this year, about three months ago. But um, at the very last minute, the Dean Daniel and, and the other people who managed the cathedral decided that they still want me to work there. They still want me to run programs there in the long term. But in the short term, they decided that the space needed to be uh, improved and renovated and needed to be sealed off so that uh, the dust from stone carving wouldn't right. get on other people's work and the, the right. noise and the uh, ventilation and such. So that's, that's an expensive undertaking. Uh, we're still looking for um, a solution to that in terms of finding people who might fund that uh, construction. But uh, it affected this upcoming program because I needed to find another space to run it. And I, I, I did make an effort to find a place in, in Harlem, but unfortunately there was nothing that uh, fit the budget. And mm-hmm. I had to, as a fallback, I, I'm going to run it in the same space where I've been using as my personal workspace in Greenpoint, for the last uh, three years or so, okay. where, where I've yeah Greenpoint Brooklyn, where I've run the other two previous programs. Now the other the other two programs I've run were only six weeks, and uh, this one well it was originally it was supposed to be six months, but we had to scale back to four because I didn't quite raise it as much uh, 
funding as I'd hoped. Right. But even at right. four months, it's a dramatic, a dramatic expansion from six weeks. And if you go on our uh, academy website, which is uh, www.stonecarversacademy.com, you right. can watch videos of the previous programs. Uh, well, the, pre- the first program and see pictures of the, of the second program. And one thing I want to uh, make sure everybody realizes about this upcoming program, being that it's four months instead of six weeks, there's a lot of time not just to have the participants become competent, but to have them collaborate on a project which is uh, right. going to be exhibited in public. And given Fantastic. that the participants are all veterans, uh, I have high hopes that it will express something to the world, to the city, to Harlem, about what that's like to, you know, be a, a soldier for the United States uh, in, in these conflicts far away from home. Because uh, I think a lot of us have no idea what, what, what that might be like and right. really want to know. We want to connect with that. And, and the next program I run, I hope to run for people who've been incarcerated and have four people who've been incarcerated create a piece of public art that will express something about what that experience is like. Because, again, so many of us are completely ignorant of what that's like. And it's important. It's important for us to understand uh, what our neighbors' experiences are. And there's a huge therapeutic component to just shaping stone by traditional methods. And um, my hope is that people who've been through some kind of trauma not necessarily have to diagnose with PTSD, Although if they are, that's that's fine. But there's a therapeutic aspect to stone carving and to many crafts that that will come through and it will benefit people and help them heal and renew their life and help them transition to uh, the workforce and and to uh, productive uh, post-military or uh, post-whatever life. And that's the, the second part of the training program is not just to preserve this tradition It's also to help people and to give them the gift that I got. And, you know, if you find the well of happiness, you can either guard it and keep it a secret and not tell anybody, or you can say, here, I share it with the world. It's unlimited. There's no uh, limit on how much is there. And then we can all partake and and be healed and and be happy. Chris, that's uh, really, really great stuff. And uh, you said it better than I could ever say it of, the reason why I wanted you uh, to have wanted you on the show to have this conversation uh, that we're having, and uh, you had mentioned of uh, some of your commissions, and just in case uh, some possible applicants or those listening who know possible applicants and want to look at some of uh, Chris's yeah. um, commissions, you can go to StoneCarving.USA and. Uh, check out just US, that website just US. for yeah. just us uh, for right. uh, some of the commissions dot US. And, dot us and and learn and learn and find out more about that. But uh, uh, again, um, you know, uh, another point, Chris, you had mentioned uh, an, uh, you have another cycle that you want to do for um, uh, those who have been incarcerated. Uh, right, and and I just want to mention that I did a a, a a podcast a few months ago with a gentleman who created a uh, nonprofit to work with young men and women uh, to teach them job skills after oh. they get out of prison. And you know, uh, if you, I'm going to write it down, and if you remember. When you're ready for that information, I like to share that with you and connect you two so that you know uh, yeah, you may be able to that. help each other. You may be able to help yeah. each other. Yeah, I, I've realized yeah. that one of the one of the challenges to finding people t- who want to be trained in stone carving is, is the complete uh, fact that people don't know what stone carving is. I mean, people know right. Right. what the artifact is, but they don't know what the activity is. So when you hang a flyer saying. Uh, opportunity to learn stone carving. A lot of people are like, "What in the world is that? I can't even visualize that. I don't. E- I don't know if I want to do it because I don't even know what it is." So, uh, <laughs> I think that's part of the reason I've had a little difficulty in in recruiting is that 
it's just something that is completely mysterious to people and they don't know if they want to do it. So uh, go to the website. You can watch the video at uh, www.stonecarversacademy.com. You can watch the video and see people doing it and understand uh, you can understand w- w- what it's going to be like if, if you are a loved one or, or a friend, uh, grandson, anybody that you know w- might be right for them. I believe it's right for a lot of people. It's not right for everybody, but I believe it's right for a lot of people. Well, and, and I you saw can call the, me if you're uh, interested. Yes. Oh, sorry. Ahead, I want to give my number you, one more time. <laughs> please, please, six four six two two nine six four one eight. Please call or text me, and and uh, we can talk about it. Yeah. I'm on the hunt. I'm looking. And you for know what I'm going to also do, Chris, is that uh, after we're finished with the show, and we uh, uh, we'll share it with our audience Excellent. on our website, and we also Great. send an email blast out. Uh, to another list of 5,000 uh, uh, folks on our email list. So uh, we're uh-huh. going to try and help you fill that, awesome. that spot as uh, much as <laughs> yeah. possible. And, yeah. you know, what I was in, uh, uh, what really struck me, uh, along with all the other things that you've <laughs> talked about and that's on the website, Thank is you. that you don't have to have any experience. No, no experience. No. That's, a, that's very important. I had no experience when I got started. I had no uh, artistic ambitions. I had no. Uh, I didn't really like to draw or, or sculpt. So it right. starts. It starts. <laughs> it starts as a as a craft. It starts learning how to shape a flat surface, you know, which is just a geometrical thing. You're not using any kind of creativity or composition. It's just learning how to use the tools to be precise. Right. And then from there, you you put add more challenge with every uh, every project has a little more challenge. Um, stone masonry is the craft of shaping stones precisely for construction. So these are geometric shapes. Some of them are very complicated, so you need to know how to use the tools with precision. But once you've become good at that, then you do uh, architectural decorative sculpture, which is, again, it's not creative because a lot of times it's designed by an architect. Someone else has specified exactly what you're, right. you know, a certain kind of leaf or a certain kind of uh, mm. shield, something right. uh, decorative. It's not, you, you may have the opportunity to be creative, but often you're just doing something somebody else has, has decided. It's not until you really get all these skills in place that you're in a position to not only uh, execute, but to design something of your own. And I accelerate that process so that in a four month training program, the participants will definitely get to that creative stage, but it's not something that is a prerequisite for somebody uh, to apply by any means. It wasn't for me. That's great. And uh, I discovered that I was capable of doing things that if I would have known that I would be asked to do, I would have been afraid and I would have said, oh, this isn't for me. I'm not going to try this because it's it's daunting. But the door is open. Anybody who thinks it might be – well, anybody who likes working with tools, who is hands-on, who is not afraid to be dusty or or swing a hammer – the only people I would want to exclude are people who would be uh, turned off by that. To be outside of uh, that, creative. Yeah, the door is open. So if you think Chris, you can do it, still, you probably can. You probably can, and and I think you're yeah. completely right. Um, and I, I um, uh, we were talking a little earlier, and uh, you know, as an artist who happens to be uh, the publisher of uh, Harlem World Magazine, you know. Uh, you know, I always remember my uh, sculpture teacher saying, you know, you have to see the image in the stone. You have to see the image in the uh, whatever you're going to carve. It, does that still hold true or not so much or somewhere in the middle? I feel like there's different ways of interpreting that. You know, in a way it makes okay. it sound magical. In a way it makes it sound like, oh, I don't see it. There must be something wrong with me, which is not the way I believe that ah. – um, a person should should proceed should interpret it. Uh, I believe, you know, if you look at a blank piece of paper, it's the same. It's the same principle. You need to be able to see whatever you want to uh, draw, you know, paint, create on, on, create that paper. on the paper. Uh, right. Yeah, it's the same principle. And if you want to uh, cook something, you need to be able to look at a cabinet full of ingredients and say you need to be able to see what you know, what you're going to create uh, out of this stuff. It, it's it's nothing magical or mystical about it. it. It's a process that can be taught. And too many times artists try to be uh, macho or, or mystical or, or 
<laughs> some kind of uh, special being and elevate it to some uh, intimidating level that people feel like, oh, I just don't have Chris, it. I can't, Chris, you know, I'm that's not you me. Chris, i off because yeah. we're, we're sure. at our, our last 20 seconds. And Understood. before we yeah. finish, I want to make sure you give that phone number and the URL so folks Thanks. can Thanks. contact you. Okay. Anybody who thinks they might be interested in this program, please give me a call or a text at 646 229 Six four one eight, and you can go to the website to see images of, of other programs we've run, which is at www.stonecarversacademy.com. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Chris, and uh, I will be reaching out to you for more stuff. Thanks again, and the best of luck, man. Okay, thank you, Harlem. Please come through for me. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Congratulations, you've just been handed a huge new opportunity. Bravo. With it comes the need for new skills, skills you'll need to master in short order. Every year, Harvard Business School Executive Education helps executives like you develop the hard and soft skills it takes to succeed in new roles. This is your chance. Go. Start by going to hbs.me go. That's hbs.me go.